Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're going to be looking at some early small ring hammer broom handles and just kind of talk about some of the mechanical changes that they went through in the early stages when there was still some transition happening. So um, what we've got here are just four, you know, relatively early Mauser broom handles, uh, all of them small ring hammers. So these guns are going to date between about 19, probably about 1902 to about 1905. And uh, this one is just sort of here because it's in the serial number range, not necessarily because of the condition. Actually, the interesting thing that all these guns have in common is they are all Von Lenkirk and Detmold retailer marked guns. Now, obviously, there is an entire video on this already, but Von Lenkirk and Detmold was actually the exclusive importer of Mauser pistols, among other guns, to the United States before World War I. And when, then what they would do is uh, Mauser would make the gun, obviously. And then Mauser would stamp Von Lenkirk and Detmold, New York, right here on your small ring guns. And they would then send them to New York, to Von Lenkirk and Detmold, who would either sell them on the commercial market or they would uh, sell them to various shops across the United States. And the really cool thing is, I believe Griffin and Howe still has a lot of the original record books that show where these guns went. Some of them have pretty interesting stories. A lot of them, well, really don't. Uh, but sometimes you can actually track them to the person who bought them. The name will still be in the book or even the, the region that they went to. I've seen some that went to Seattle, Washington. Seems like a lot went to Seattle. Um, a lot went to San Francisco. Uh, so certainly a lot on the West Coast. I've seen uh, ones that were actually bought by uh, ship captains for their crew. I've seen a few of those. So I've seen some pretty interesting things. So if you have a VLD gun, you can definitely look into getting the records for these. Anyway, we'll get to the mechanics of these. So again, your standard small ring hammer came into being right around serial number 35,000. And it is just called that because obviously you have a small ring hammer. Uh, the one before it was the large ring, and it's a very large round ring. Uh, you've got your standard, really nicely pre-war fire blued parts, small parts, with your rear sight that goes up to a thousand meters. This gun is in the 36,000 serial number range, so it's a pretty early small ring hammer, and it still retains the long extractor that Mauser used up until about 37,000 or 38,000. And uh, then they went to a shorter extractor. You've got your standard chamber marking. You've got your serial number has been standardized to be on the left flat. And you've got your standard front sight. These guns will all have the Mauser mark on the right hand side. And at this time, Mauser was using straw, which is a form of um, basically heat treating on, on the triggers still. So you have these really, really pretty gold triggers, and it's called straw. You'll see that on Luger's as well. And your standard grips, which are just the standard serrated grips that Mauser used for a long time until the 1930 commercial, and they changed it up a little bit. Uh, all of them have the standard lanyard ring that you're going to see on broom handles. Once again, your Von Leckerk and Detmold mark. And keep in mind, once again, this was added by the factory when the gun was new. This is not an, a later importer stamp or anything like that. So if you find a gun like this, it really doesn't hurt the value at all. As a matter of fact, it helps it for some people to have this stamp that is original to the gun and something to be expected for guns that came to America. And you've got your standard crown U-proof here. And as you can see, that's in the 
36,000 serial number range. And your serial number is going to be repeated here, here, and the last three there as well. And your bolt is also going to be serial numbered. And don't forget this this part right here is also numbered to the gun and you can check that by actually pushing the button on this cursor here and moving it up and it'll be very obvious uh, the last three or last four of the serial number will be on your bolt stop right there then by about 38,000 and this gun's in the 38,000 serial number range as you can see right there got your standard front sight this sight is actually not standard because it has been modified to be a target sight I've seen this on a lot of VLD guns that came to America and it is at least my observation that it was sort of a a special order thing that you could have VLD do. I don't believe this was just gun done by a random gunsmith since the, the type of work seems very similar on all the ones I've seen. And they basically turned it into that kind of sight right there, if you can see that. Just don't want to bang these guns together. So there you go. Again, your VLD marking. But by 38,000, Mauser had gone to a short extractor versus the long extractor. So this is what you're going to see on most guns. Uh, from about 35,000 to about 37, early 38,000, Mauser was using the long extractors on your small ring hammer guns. This one has the standard sight as well and the standard cursor to move that sight with your repeated serial number on your bolt stop. Another thing that a lot of people get kind of hot and bothered about sometimes, there will be random numbers underneath this tangent site sometimes, sometimes not. Um, a lot of people will refer to them as contract numbers. I've never seen any rhyme nor reason to why they would be called that. I think they're just assembly numbers for Mauser. Um, really no one has any kind of idea why they're there uh, everyone's got a theory my theory is that they were just from the factory and not really a big deal but if you're ever looking underneath this tangent rear sight and you see anywhere from two to four numbers and they don't match the rest of the gun don't worry about it they're not going to so that's nothing that you should ding a gun about and you've got your standard serial number and again repeated in German fashion 500 extra times than it needs to be. And then this gun is actually uh, fairly interesting because it lived its life in Los Angeles. It uh, was brought to VLD and then sold on the West Coast uh, pretty early, I believe in about 1906, 1905, 1906. And uh, it came out of Los Angeles where it had been and so it uh, spent all its time in, in basically Southern California and obviously a VLD gun with exceptionally nice straw on that trigger your panel milling is going to be the same on all these guns they Mauser had finally standardized on the kind of panel milling that they were going to do your again small ring hammer with the standard rear sight out to a thousand meters all of these are cut for shoulder stocks and i believe all four of these do have their shoulder stocks um, just not doing a video on it we'll do a video on shoulder stocks at some point but uh, as you can see this is in the 50,000 serial number range and right around this time mauser was also filling a contract for uh, nine millimeter exports and the difference with those guns is they actually didn't have a chamber marking this whole area right here was just left blank so that's sort of a clue if you find a mauser 
in this 50,000 serial number range with no marking here. That gives you an idea that you might be looking at a red, or not a red nine, but a nine millimeter export from about 1904 to 1906. And again, your very standard grips. This one's got pretty nice light grips and your standard marking on the right side with everything else being pretty much the same as always. And then moving on to a final gun here. This one is also a VLD, obviously. And these are pretty coated in some preservative grease. So my camera does not like me very much right now. But as you can see, VLD gun, standard panel milling here, and your standard 50 to 1,000 sight. And nothing particularly exciting about any of these. Again, you're on your short extractor, your everything else being the same. And again, this one is in the 53,000 serial number range. So this is really when Mauser had decided, okay, this is how we're gonna make them. And they just kept making these essentially unchanged from about serial number 38,000 up until about serial number 220,000, which are known as pre-war commercials. These are all pre-war commercial guns. Uh, however, they stopped with the, the straw and some of the really nice extra fancy touches um, by about by about two, serial number 200,000. You're going to see a decline in quality in terms of the finish. These early guns are some of the nicest guns I think I've ever seen. And you know, you've got your, your straw, you've got your blue on your small parts, your fire blue, sometimes they're incredibly vivid. You've got grips that are definitely commercial grade with almost a, a striping in the wood. And just really, really nice guns that you can just tell were really just made for the commercial market. But just looking at a couple of very interesting broom handles, I'd love to hear your comments about these. And if you've got one, I'd love to hear about it. So leave a comment and like and subscribe. And we'll be looking at some more interesting guns as well as other kinds of military coming up soon. Thanks for watching.